Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. It got a little bit windy here. <laughs> like really windy. It's okay. It's spring. That's what that's what happens in springtime. Uh, that was yesterday. Very gusty. So I just left them down. No reason to pick them up. Just gonna keep blowing them over. They'll just damage the plants. But I think it's nice enough to go ahead and set them back up. It feels like okay. There's a slight breeze. I can't believe these mule palms got blown over though. They are heavy. Like really heavy. The queen palms, the, no surprise there at all. But these guys, oh, that was a little bit weird. It's like I said, very heavy. Hey, Tuck. Want to say hi? Where's Tucker? Here he is. There he is. Good boy, Tuck. Oh, it's so nice to see you. So nice to see you. You pooped on the patio. Don't poop on the patio, Tucker. Yeah, see how windy it was? Even blew that rose over, which is now very dry. The wind just blew all the water right out of it. Okay, I'm gonna clean up. I'll do some picking up. I'll come right back. There we go. That's much better. I went ahead and I threw this queen palm in the ground over here because there was already a hole from where the magnolia was. So it's like, that's easier. It'll stand up right. And uh, it provides the perfect shade to that window from looking right up into the neighbor's houses at nighttime. Because when all the lights are on, you know, it's like everybody can see. It's just nice having the little bit of extra privacy. And it's fun watching the birds run around in the trees, in the palm trees. I brought the hibiscus around and the banana tree. And things are, you know, happening. But there needs to be more happening. So far, I don't think anything else is blowing over. I don't think I've ever seen the mule palms blow over before. That took some extreme wind. I mean, it also destroyed that umbrella, pulled it right out of the table. So that was a lot of wind. But that's spring, and that's what spring does, right? Ultimately, though, I had these queen palms to go down at this end or down on this end of the pool until I can bring the adenidia palms around. Those can't come out until it's, like, steadily warm. I could move them out to my front porch, which I'll probably do. But I'm not going to bring them all the way back here. Because if there's another cold snap, that's a long, long trip all the way back to the front of the house or into the garage, which is full. There's no more room for plants in the garage. So I need to stay close to a door. Now, I think it'd be fun to open the pool. Yeah, oh, that's better. Look at that. Finally, I can say goodbye to winter. I mean, I know it's been spring for a while, but it just it doesn't feel like outdoors time until there's water in the pool. I mean, there is always water in the pool. You don't drain it during the winter time, but the cover's off. You, I mean, I don't I don't need to explain this. You see what's going on here. And it smells good. It's so salty. It's a saltwater pool. Very salty out here. And I have been fighting temptation lately, like big time. I've just been like, okay, let's just bring the plants out and get going with them. But it's not time. I mean, I've already kind of pushed it as it is with the things that I've brought out here. Wouldn't you say? I mean, pretty much everything that's out here can take the cold. The only exception to that might be the um, Super Junia Vista bubble gums, the Osteospermums that are back there, with the, which is the African daisies, and then the sun patients. But that's just a few things. I can pick them up, move them in. Should we have frost? I don't think we're going to, uh, but it's possible. You never know. I will do a separate video on hardening the plants off and everything, and I'll try and have that out like Tuesday or Wednesday, or like the next video that comes out of this one, I'll go in depth on that. It takes a while to talk about it. And you know, the vlogs kind of, we just sort of, oh, the hibiscus too. Yeah, that one I have to watch out for. The Morelli, probably back to what I was saying, uh, you know, it's just chill time. I don't want to go like in depth on something where I have to like do things on the screen and whatnot. So uh, basically what I have going on here is just, it's just going to be me fighting temptation. That's, I mean, like big time, you can see I'm already losing the battle and that's okay. I'm fine with it. I need to be out here doing things and getting the exercise and just having fun outside. And there's plenty of other things to do. Like I have a whole pile of like old pottery and yard waste and root balls from annuals and things that I need to figure out what to do with. You can see it real quick. Ready? Boom. That was it. it it's a mess. You don't need to see it. The Where I live, there's a yard waste company that will come around and pick things up, but they're not doing it anymore with stuff that's going on. So like little things, actually the Chinese fan palm's okay. I had this in a mulch pile and it has some green in it. So I'm not too worried about that, but yeah, I don't know what to do with all the yard waste. I don't have a compost pile um, because I have an HOA and the, you can't have like big things like that. At least not if it's gonna be visible from the street. And the only place I could put one is 
right over there. So I've just kind of been like, I don't know what to do. Uh, but there are some things I could do. Like I need to cut down this magnolia tree, which is really sad and I would rather not, but uh, it has magnolia scale. And uh, the only way to get rid of that is to stay on top of using chemicals and sprays. Even the safe sprays are, <laughs> are I sound like a pirate. Even the safer sprays are still risky to use with the pollinators and everything and the tree being so tall. It's probably like 25 foot. Maybe it's probably like 30 feet. Maybe, I don't know. How tall is a two-story garage? It's not a two-story garage. A garage with an attic. Is that two-story? That's how big it is. You can see it right there. There would be a lot of spray from any types of insecticidal soaps or whatever I'm using. And I try to be very conscious of the pollinators. Last year I talked a lot about how I was really upset and scared. I didn't see a single honeybee until like, I wanna say maybe mid July, even later than that, which is terrifying. That shouldn't be going on, especially with all the flowers that I plant on here. Like there are usually honeybees everywhere. So uh, I've always been careful with the sprays. I'm gonna be even more careful and to, eradicate that problem it has to be sprayed often if using something that's really safe uh, and uh, i've talked to some arborists and what they've told me is that essentially to really get rid of the um magnolia scale they come through and they like inject high potent doses of amaca and uh, which is in a lot of you know over the can not over the counter things you can buy from the like lowe's home depot big box stores but it's like a high intensity dosage that you can't just buy it has to come from a professional and that's a systemic so it would work its way up into the tree kill them off and even then they said it's only like 50 percent um successful and i don't that injecting chemicals into the ground that all is going to run off this is all drainage right here and uh, i know you can't see it but there's drainage underneath all this that goes under my patio to a storm sewer so those chemicals would go right into the storm systems into the storm sewer into the water systems and it's just not a great idea and then anything that would get planted around here that flowers like i have this japanese orange tree here the um trifoliate dragon something or other i don't remember the name right now but it gets covered in flowers and the pollinators love it those flowers would then become toxic so uh, it's my what i've d deduced from all this is that the magnolia it's just gotta go so uh, i had talked about it, like last year about you know i did a dormant oil and a whole bunch of different things and it's still it's got like i can already start to sort of see where they're coming back in here so the trees just gotta go i don't know how i'm gonna get it out of here it'll probably just be a pile of tree sitting in my yard for a while but that's okay i'll figure something out it does have to get done relatively soon because the bananas like they're really taking off and starting to do their thing i will actually probably need to pull this mulch off so that there's no rocks they're even poking up from down below there i just cutting these big branches off there will be things falling and destroying things the bananas grow pretty quickly but it just seems to make more sense to me to go ahead and get this cut down before there's a lot of stuff down below for it to fall on top of and break but i may end up doing because i'm gonna need a professional to come out here and actually get the root ball out the ground over here is full of pipes so i want someone to come in and actually dig that out trim it out so i could potentially go ahead and just do a hard hardcore cut back on this to keep it short i mean i'm talking like probably cut it like right around there it will probably re-sprout and start going as long as i get this done soon enough and uh, it would at least be low enough that i could have more control over the spray and uh, that may just be what i have to do this year i haven't decided yet i'm just kind of thinking out loud here because like i said i don't know where i'm going to dispose of the tree and um like you can't do burn piles or anything like that here and i don't it, maybe I, there's someone i can call but uh, with the whole thing going on it kind of throws a kink in the plans you can see i did move some plants out i'll talk about that when i talk about hardening hardening things off i don't know i'm tempted to go out into the garage and get my chainsaw and just give this a whirl real quick maybe even just use the one on the stick and get a ladder and start cutting little pieces off from up top and at least just kind of see how easy it's going to go i don't want to do any damage here to the trifoliate orange uh, these are apparently very rare they didn't used to be i mean i got this for like 30 bucks so it was just a little stick but um 
uh, from people who have commented on that video where I talked about this. Apparently it's kind of a hard thing to find now. And regardless of that, I still don't want to do any damage to it because it's a very slow grower. So I don't, I need to be careful there. And it's not, it needs to be dug up and moved. Everything has kind of shifted forward. This was originally planted right back there, like a little bit in front of that pot and the ground just settled. This is all, it's hard to tell in the video, but everything's kind of bermed up here. So, but digging it up is going to be a problem. Look at the size of the thorns on this. This is not a plant that you mess around with. It'll get you. It's gotten me plenty of times. I would have to, I don't even know what I could wrap this in <laughs> that those thorns wouldn't go right through. I mean, it is, this is a very uh, dangerous plant, which is another reason to get it further away from the patio though, right? What am I going to do now? I think I'm, let me go look for the saw and play around. I'm, I'm going to think about that for a minute. Nope. Never mind. Just remembered. Shoulder injury. Not supposed to be doing stuff like that. And the chainsaw is stuck behind a bunch of plants. I have to pull all the plants out. I don't, I don't feel like doing that. I think I'm going to have to call a professional to take that tree out. Which isn't great. I don't know if that's something that can be done right now. Tucker, cut the tree down. Well, I have the mule palms out. I could go ahead and get those moved down there. That's where the mule palms go in this two big blue pots. That's where those go. Mule palms, I'm referring to this palm tree right here, and then the other one's kind of stuck back there behind everything. But I've been using them as my little screen. I made myself my little privacy bubble over here <laughs> to do some filming and work in. That's where I'm standing right now. It's, I mean, did I, I didn't need to explain that. You can probably tell where I'm standing. So I could just, I'll just move, I can move one. Why not? Probably not supposed to do that either, but eh, well, if it starts to hurt, then I just won't. There we go. That looks good enough. The rim that's on there, that won't be visible once I get it planted up. I feel like it's too soon to do that though, right? Don't you think? Where I live, generally the last frost date's like mid-April. So that's something I just have to keep an eye on for a bit and pay close attention to it. But until then, like this is, it's just, it's, it's, I'm too close. You can't even see this. Yeah. There we go. So I know I should do both of them, but I want to hold on to the other one for my little privacy bubble I'm making over there. I don't need both of them over there though. I'm thinking this year I will probably do the Super Tunia Vista bubble gums and the Super Tunia Vista silverberries. I really liked those last year. I didn't use the silverberries in any of the palm pots, the pool pots. But I like the idea of having something with a lighter color on it, something white that will reflect the lights and everything from the pool at nighttime. In years past, I've done the Vista bubble gums mixed with sweet potato vines. I think I did the marguerite lime maybe last year. I don't remember. And it, it, the same problem happens every year. The sweet potato vines outcompete the uh, petunias, and I end up just having to constantly like set them apart from each other and spread the sweet potato vines out or pull them together really so they don't choke the uh, petunias. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to do that this year. And uh, I don't, I can't even remember if I ordered the silverberries. I still have plants coming in the mail. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving the house, but the orders, I placed most of my orders in like January. So what's done is done there. I'm just being very careful with any package that comes in the mail. For the most part, I've just been kind of like scooting them to the side of my porch and making them sit there for a couple days and just hoping nobody steals them and then I'll open them after disinfecting them and everything so ideally there won't be a lot of packages coming but the orders have been placed I could cancel them most of my orders are from like family-owned businesses I don't really want to do that so it's just gonna I'm just gonna have to be really careful which is what we should all be doing anyways right uh, everybody needs to be careful <laughs> they had been saying it only lives on services for like a day or two uh, maybe even up to three days, depending on the surface. I know cardboard was one of the longest periods, but then I just had a very, very fun phone call with my palm tree dealer, and uh, he was talking about his orders, his trucks he's bringing up, and they're quarantining all of his orders for two weeks before loading them up and moving them up here, which is smart and makes sense, but I was like, two weeks? What's that about? And then he said that there was some, I don't know, I haven't looked into it and I'm not gonna try and fear him longer. I need to go ahead and check that out. I've been kind of taking a break from the news. Like I'm checking it out every day just to stay informed, but like it was just constant the last several days. And I was like, I got it. My brain can't handle much more for right now. Like we all just, you know, need a little bit of a break and an escape. And that's what I'm doing out here right now. That's why there's no point to this video. <laughs> why I didn't want to pick a subject and stick with it because I needed to just 
kind of turned my brain off. I hope that's okay with everybody. I uh, would like to do some more plant things. I suppose I could start moving some of these guys around back to over where that table is to make my new little area. But that area is still kind of messy though. Yeah, believe it or not, I've actually spent a lot of time over here cleaning up. It was mostly just this drainage area in here. It was just full of pine needles and leaves and all those things. And I've been pulling those out. And, you know, most years I like to put fresh soil into the pots, but I'm not going anywhere and buying soil. So I'm not going to do that this year. I'm going to just use the old soil. And it's been out here all winter, so it just it's going to need some refreshing. But I'm not really that worried about, like pathogens in there and if it's something where I do start digging there and I notice something or even just to be safe I could do a peroxide flush with it or even spread it all out into a tarp and let it bake in the sun for a few days that would be fine. I have also started dumping my water garden pots to get those cleaned up and get the fountains back on. I don't think that's gonna happen in this video though. That's actually kind of like a big project and I don't I, don't, I just don't really feel like it. But I think in these pots Last year I had my white bird of paradise in them. I'll probably do that again this year, but they still need another week or so to harden off. If I move them over here where it's kind of exposed, the wind might just make the foliage fall right off of them. I don't know, it's something I'm thinking about. That magnolia planter I did though, I did that to go right here until my tropicals come back from it. I have, for anyone who's new here, my big tropicals, those go off to a greenhouse. There's a service here in St. Louis that just takes your big plants, stores them in a greenhouse, and brings them back in the spring, which is really nice. I love having that here, and that's my palm tree dealer I was referring to before. Uh, there's normally a big Adenidia palm that will go here, but those won't be here until mid to late May, maybe even later. With the And all this time talking, may as well just do- what am I doing? Like, I'm just gonna scoot that over there? I don't think so. That's a gigantic pot. I need my cart. Oh, yeah, the shoulder situation, annoying, because I'm not supposed to be doing things where I have to, like, lift my arm up like above my shoulder because then it hurts the shoulder but at least I can like do squatty things and push things around that's fine and there really isn't pain unless I do something I'm not supposed to so it could be worse and uh it's fixable with surgery but that's you know that has to wait till after COVID hose what are you doing has to wait until um it's safe because it'll require anesthesia and I'm not going anywhere near a hospital if I don't have to right now absolutely not What's the problem here? One-handed things can be tricky sometimes. There we go. Whew, okay, well, it turns out that was too big for the cart, but it was nice to talk about the cart. So I just pulled it and see there's like a trick here on the ground. Good workout. I'm not complaining. And um, it's not like a huge transformation or anything, but it's better than nothing, right? I mean, so yeah, I'd, I was debating. I have a couple of inkberry hollies in my driveway and I was thinking about tossing those in here. Then I'd have to dig them up from their planters. And that's just, why would I, I can just wait a week and put the bird of paradise in those. So that's, I had to tell myself to calm down a little bit there. I was getting ahead of myself. So and I guess I'll just move the rest of the plants over. I'd like to put a little bit of a bunch of things like kind of right here to sort of block the view of that pool pond that normally has bamboo wrapped around it, but the bamboo fell apart. It does it every few years, or it's actually reeds. And um, so that looks really ugly. So I want something here, and then I'd really like to have something else going on over here. Oh, I need to cut those peppers out too. I haven't done that yet. Um, See, so yeah, I just need to screen. I'm trying, I'm just, privacy. That's what's happening here. Yeah, yeah, okay, that'll do. I mean, this isn't gonna look great. <laughs> this is all just temporary. It's so early in the season. I just, like probably shouldn't even have like a ton of stuff out here. Maybe I'll put one of the big windmill palms right there. That might look okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I said, it's not gonna look pretty, but um, uh, privacy. I'm liking that. Oh, I just remembered I have a whole nother windmill palm I could put in between them. Should I do? I don't know. I have to repot. Mm. <laughs> look at that. It's such an incredible transformation. I realized that I don't have to repot this just to set it there. I tried to squeeze it into this blue pot down there, but it wasn't going to fit and I would prefer to pot it up and not down. I guess you could say it's displayed more nicely, maybe. And I moved my tree fern over here. <laughs> Doesn't that look beautiful? Looks so much better. I'm just going to start filling spots in with plants. I have plenty of things to start sticking over here. So there's this going on over here. I can't move everything over here because it's, you can see it's not very sunny. It is in the morning for like, I don't know, 
five hours maybe, which isn't terrible, but for like the petunias and impatience and uh, the sun patience, that is, I don't think they would appreciate this much shade. And actually I should probably move the hibiscus. I could put that over there, pop it right over here with everything else. That Mediterranean fan palm, man, it got desiccated and burnt. It was outside most of the winter, so it's a little bit weird that it had some issues with the sun when spring rolled around, but it's okay. It has fresh growth coming up out of the middle. It's hard to see, but it's in there. It'll be okay. Oh, but what I was getting at, what I was getting ready to say, is that I've done all this. <laughs> Made such a spectacular, beautiful place to sit outside. It's really going to bug me that this fountain isn't up and running, but the pump that goes in it has been kind of wonky. So I guess at the very least I could dump it and clean it out. Wouldn't hurt anything. I may as well try it. Well, that was disgusting. What is that? It's like stained onto my really, really gross in there. I, this isn't a ceramic pot, so I didn't worry about dumping it and covering it for the winter time because I didn't have to worry about it cracking. Uh, but I think next year I'll flip that over. I'll flip it upside down so it doesn't fill up with all the winter gunk. You can see it all around there. It's pretty nasty and I'm trying to eyeball if it's level. I feel like it's leaning a little bit, but I can't really tell. I'm not really sure. I pulled it closer to the patio than I used to. I don't know. I don't also, I don't know if you caught on. I don't really care. I'm not really in a aesthetic kind of place right now. I'm just trying to get things like cleaned up and started. So if I need to make adjustments, I can do that. It's not that heavy. I can pull it forward, stuff more rocks under it and level out that way. I should actually be doing that right now while it's filling up, shouldn't I? That would be smart. Okay. I think the pump's working. I thought I heard something there. I see water moving. Nothing's coming out the top. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Wow, that has a stronger flow than I remember. That's good. Oh, Tucker's gonna be happy. He loves drinking out of his fountain bolt. That's really the only reason I have this here is for Tucker. It helps him stay hydrated. He likes to drink out of the pool, which isn't great for them. It's salt water and it's a really small amount of salt, but still like it's probably not ideal. I mean, frogs and stuff live in that pool for a long time. They're amphibians. Do you think they would die first? They're really sensitive. But the whole point is fresh water for the dogs, fresh moving oxygen rich water that I have to keep clean, which isn't too hard to do and sound. It sounds very pretty. Doesn't that sound nice and relaxing and super easy? I've had people ask me to do a video about this before, but it's a, just get you a big wide pot that doesn't have a hole in the bottom and put a pump in the bottom of another pot and raise it up with bricks or upside down pots, whatever you got to do to get it to the level you want. And I put a piece of egg crate in here up high, up way high. And like, it's like right there. And then just put a layer of rocks on there to create kind of like a false sort of bottom up high so we don't have to fill that entire pot with rocks. Really, really easy. I guess that's why I never did a video on it because it just seems a little bit too simple to do a video on. It's, like I said, just get a bit, or a whiskey barrel. Those work really well too. <sighs> I love the sound of moving water and the birds enjoy this too. They like to sit up there and drink and bathe, which isn't ideal for the whole aspect of the dog drinking out of it, but you know, it's fine. And that's one of the reasons I have to make sure to flush it fairly often because the, you know, the bird poop, that's not great for drinking water. This is still, still a work in progress, but I'm pretty happy with what I've done over here. I, I want to, I could put my magnolia over here. Let me do that. <laughs> Again, not a drastic improvement, but it's something. This is good. I just needed to burn off some energy outside, but it's like I said, it's a little bit trolly to be planting things. So just, even though I was just moving stuff around and doing some watering, I'm enjoying the way I feel, which is good. This is probably very chaotic for y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, just like I said, just kind of going with the flow and working outside, trying to get stuff done out here, but uh, it's still, it's mostly just like cleanup right now, so I don't really know how much to film with all that. I do have this nice bag of sun grow over here. This is what I was going to talk about with repurposing old potting mix. This is a fantastic soil blend. I really like it. I'll try and can you see you see it? Can you see? It's good stuff. It has a lot of compost in it, but for my drip systems, it doesn't dry fast enough. Like I reduced my drip to like twice a week 
the plants still just they drowned with it so what i have been doing is just using like a scoop full and with my all-purpose potting mixes that i'm using just help liven it up and enrich it so if i end up reusing soil from last year which i probably will because like i said i'm not going to the store and buying potting mix right now i'm staying home and st louis is ordered to stay home but lowe's is still open i don't know i guess like in case you know you need to fix something around the house i don't know but just to be safe i'm not doing that i'm going to use everything i have including this so with the old soil i have some fresh compost i have some old uh, biotone starter things like that to help liven old soil back up and kind of enrich it and that's why i that's why this big that's why this bag's sitting here Whew. sometimes i just keep talking and i forget to breathe that's not normal that's not how being alive is supposed to work yeah good boy tuck good boy see nice and elevated so his old man hips don't have to bend down and yeah he went right for it i opened the door and he somehow knew he went right over and he's like thanks thanks for the bougie water bowl I had to figure something out with the electrical over here because something keeps tripping this and i don't know what it is and there's just there's something wrong with it because that's hooked up to the same thing as this light is and then it, i reset it and it continues to not work and then i go over to the breaker box everything's fine but i flip it anyways and then i come back and still nothing it did this last year too like if this would trip it would be useless for like a month and then it would just randomly start working again so it was fun getting that set up but guess what it's it's not working now so that's that's fantastic oh well it's starting to rain and drizzle anyways so it's time to get into the house and get away from the moisture because cameras electronics and water do not mix right duck you're probably hungry anyways you want some dinner tuck did the dogs eat oh boy he has to get you some food tucker i was going to make beans for dinner and i think i may have over soaked them like they're really plumped up and cracking. Hey, look at look at this. See that? So this one's like bursting out of its bean skin already. You know, you're supposed to soak them overnight, and I did that, but it's also the next night, so it's been more like 24 hours. But who's who's eating beans for breakfast? I'm not, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You can do whatever the heck you want, but more like a 24-hour soak. So this might come out a little bit mushy, but that's okay. I mean, it's got some protein and whatever in it. And don't, that's empty. I didn't just leave it. Not that it, I don't, I mean, it's supposed to be refrigerated, but it's fine. There's no dairy in there. And it's empty, so it doesn't matter. How do I, I haven't made, like, just beans in a long time. Usually I mix them with rice or, that's neither here nor there. We'll go out to the garage here in a bit and we'll get plants. Time for a poblano update. It's big. It's fallen over. It's getting so big. I need to do some restaking on this look at all of them there's so many this is one of the originals down here and it's almost ready to pick i think it's starting to get a little bit of tenderness to it but still pretty hard now, these aren't big enough to stuff but i mean i guess i could maybe it'd be a little but i could they're good chopped up in salads and stuff like that though <laughs> it's it's time to restake this i think i should probably stop picking it up because it's not good for it to go up and down like that this is the first time the basils looked a little bit thirsty but i think it's actually because it's getting so close to the grow light that it might be kind of scorching itself a little bit so i'm gonna cut that back but otherwise it's just business as usual over here temperatures have finally started to get mild enough that the plastic being down isn't really affecting the temperature in here very much the humidity yes the temperature not so much so i may I'm, it's not gonna happen in this video but maybe next week or the week after i'll be pulling the plastic down from one side and then the problematic diva plants like the areca palms and uh the cordelin fruticosas the ones that the mealybugs just latch onto and just devour i might just throw them outside and uh, blast them off with water and you know that would be better than just you know spraying with all natural stuff and crossing my fingers so at least if i blast them off then they're off the plants so and i just keep them near the garage door so if we're going to have temperatures below like 45 i can just scoot them back in it's not a lot of shade near the garage though so i have to think about that one but i just at this point since it's only like a handful of plants it would probably take 10 minutes to move them out I feel like it would be easier to go ahead and just 
do that instead of waiting an another month to move them and then having the problem get a lot worse. I don't want to do that. I just kind of started to loosen up my patience, you know? I just kind of want to get the ball rolling, even if it's early. Uh, but the point is, late next week, the forecast will be extended out far enough where I can kind of test the waters, see how things look, and like I said, keep them close enough that I can just pull them back in if the temperatures are going to get cold again, because they probably will. It's uh, very much just wishful thinking to think that we're in the clear where I live for not having any more frost, but potentially we are. Every year's different. You just, you never know. So that's what I'm doing. I'm paying attention to that. I got my philodendron put up on a stake here. I don't remember if we talked about that last week or not. It is responding well to being on a new stake, which is great. It does have a new leaf coming out that looks like it's going to be all pink, so I might need to cut that. I'm going to let it open up and see what it does. My Rapidophora, this is from a, a online retailer that I did a video on not too terribly long ago, and the plant just came in looking terrible. There's its original stem back there. You can't really see it. It's just a big green stick came in just looking terrible but it has really started to take off and um, it's doing well it's nowhere near what it should be I'm glad that it's starting to perk up a little bit but there are other things like the white fly I've been spraying sprays I've always used that have worked great it's not doing much so uh, these that's another example of a plant like the hibiscus gonna go ahead and just push that out they can take a little bit of cold and uh, blast them off uh, the neem and everything it's particularly this hibiscus. My other ones, it's working fine. The using, I've used a little bit of neem, but I'm mostly using peppermint oil and stuff like that to help smother them and suffocate them out. And I've been using some sprays from, uh, who are you? The insecticidal super soap from Bonite. This has always worked great for white flies, but not, not on this hibiscus. And I think that it's because this one has particularly glossy foliage. So it tends to, the insecticidal soap tends to just kind of repel and bead right off of it. But you can see there, like that's not good. That's pretty bad. See that down there? Yeah, that's pretty bad too. Now that could also be from overspraying, but the leaves that are turning yellow are also the ones that have the most bugs on the underside. So this is, I mean, that's typically what you start to see when you have a white fly problem so, so getting this outside where I can blast it off and uh, spray it a little bit more easily because if I can lay this down on its side and really soak the under because the white flies hang out on the underside of the foliage so you can kind of see there's like those white dots on there that's the white fly and it's hard to I've been trying but it's really hard to get that spray up in there when it's standing up like this so little things like that I'll be working on next week and Otherwise, like I said, it's just, you know, business as usual. Just kind of trying to stay busy and enjoy the time I can have outside and make the most of every day despite what's going on. Every day that's getting a little bit more challenging. I'm sure you know what I mean there. So what have you guys been up to? Uh, hopefully staying home, right? You staying home? Stay home. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't go out. There's no reason. You don't need to. Stay home. This is... I have I have been resisting a rant on this one for a while. Don't make me don't make me do it. Stay home. Anybody else noticed how it seems to be fairly easy? I think it's a gardener's thing. Like I don't touch my face that much because you know my arm tools, my gardening tools, my hands—they're always <laughs> they've got dirt on them all the time. You kind of get out of the habit of touching your face. That hasn't been much of a struggle. Still, something I'm paying attention to because most of it's done. Uh, without us even realizing that we're doing it, but it's certainly something I'm paying attention to. No, I still haven't cleaned my desk off. It's still, things are messy. I haven't really needed to. So I've just kind of let it, I let it go. That's what it is. You know, I think it's funny the people who are like, I've been so productive. I'm like, yeah, I haven't done laundry in like two weeks. Like I just let it all go. Not really, but I've been trying to stay on top of uh, you know doing things outside when I can and a lot of time on zoom and stuff like that and uh, I do I need to I need to do laundry very badly though did y'all watch Tiger King I am very conflicted over it I wasn't going to watch it because I already have some pretty strong opinions about big cats in captivity outside of it being a conservation you know, situation. We need to conserve and whatnot. So I wasn't going to watch it, but then someone told me that 
like it's a lot more than that so i did and which just what a whirlwind that was a roller coaster and let me tell you there have been some fantastic memes that have come out of that show we'll say though there were some things in there that really i think should have had trigger warnings for some people uh, if you, there are things that you might be sensitive to seeing then i would be careful about watching it so i'm not i'm not going to recommend anybody watch it because of those things that i think could be very triggering to people i don't know why i started talking about it. oh it's because i've been calling my australian tree fern carol baskin ever since i've watched that show because of the memes i've been seeing it's just that plants so of never mind so maybe not tiger king what is it, who's been what are y'all watching that's like uplifting and happy that's the stuff I need to start checking out. I need to, I've been, like I said in one of my last vlogs, I was like, Dexter, pandemic, contagion. <laughs> like just not always like the most cheerful things. I started watching Shark Tank. Wait to talk about that. I have mixed opinions there. That's not, how did I suddenly turn this into a let's review TV shows? channel that's not what's going on here anyways hope everybody's doing well like i said staying safe staying at home please this only works if we all do it together and then aside from what's you know going on right now that everything's going great and life is just beautiful for you i'm looking very very forward to repotting this guy this monster and getting that up onto a nice sturdy steak the way it's flopped i'm worried that there's that there's a curve now in its growth so it's gonna be a very slow process straightening that back out but i can do it it's just gonna take a while and that's okay and i know people are gonna say oh just cut it off and sell the i'm not sell i'm trying to grow this into a great big monstera tree i'm gonna call it a tree and you don't want my plants you see the white flies and the mealybugs you don't want my stuff but no i can straighten that back out it'll just take some time like a few months probably but it's doable and i'm really looking forward to that and you know, when I do things like pull some of the hibiscus out and whatnot, because when I move my hibiscus out, this is, I'll say it anyways. When I pull my hibiscus out for the spring, I usually give them roughly, roughly, I usually give them roughly a 50% cut anyways. So that's one of the reasons I'm not like totally freaking out about the white fly and the sprays not really working very well. Cause I'm going to be cutting a lot of that off anyways. It's, it encourages new growth. They'll flush out more flowers that way but that's only if i can move them out early spring which i think is probably what i'm going to do like i said if it gets too cold i'll just pull them back in it's i have i think three maybe four others not just this one and uh, i just it seems don't you it, that would be much happier outside even if it's a little bit cold i think it would be happier but my point there was that it will free up some space let me try and get past all the junk that nope there's stuff everywhere in here it'll free up enough space that i can probably pull this out and go ahead and get that repot done so i can get to starting to straighten it back out because like i said i think it would really appreciate not being like hanging over like that and in something a little bit bigger it just grew so much last year i wasn't expecting it to take off the way it did but it's really been doing great it even opened up a new leaf back there can you see it not really because there's another leaf on top of it because it's grown all wonkily but it's got a really nice big piece of variegation on it and uh, i'd like to be able to appreciate that more yeah plenty to do lots of fun things going on i hope everybody's doing well i said it before i'm saying it again because i mean it Comment down below, say hi, what's everybody been up to? Positive, cheerful thoughts, positive energy. I've just, you know, we gotta put it out there and get it and try and make the most out of this terrible situation. And uh, you know, the whole YouTube thing, I just feel so cringy saying it right now. So there it is on the screen, social media, the YouTube stuff makes a big difference for the channel and I do appreciate it. So thank you so much for that. And of course, as you know what? I don't think Pumpkin's been in this video at all. Let me go inside. Let's see if we can find Pumpkin. We'll say goodbye. I just walked all the way back in the house and completely forgot that I should probably turn the lights off seeing as how it's like 11 o'clock at night. There we go. Toby, you seen Pumpkin? Where's Pumpkin? Okay, you sleepy? I don't blame you. I'm a little bit sleepy. I'm actually not. I'm kind of bouncing off the walls. Well, I see her butt. Pumpkin, what you doing down there? There's the dumbest question you could ever ask a cat. You sleeping? Pardon the parrots. Hi, Pumpkin. You've been my little sidekick. I actually think the cats are getting sick with me being here so much. You hear that? That's the sound of parrots. They don't stop. There's no mute button for parrots. How you doing, bite? You sleeping? I should leave you alone. You get some sleep. You get some rest. Oh, okay. Little snobby pumpkin.
what's wrong with you? Why are you so grumpy, Bunkin? Is it because, I mean, I woke you up? That's fair. I'm sorry. I mentioned before, I think, I kind of like this queen pumping outside the window, and I really, I really like it. Just because, one, what an amazing screen, and it's so pretty at nighttime. Look at that. The light I have on it isn't... <laughs> I can't control the color fade on it. It goes a little bit fast for my liking. But, I mean, it's still cool, but it's a little looking a little bit kind of maybe a bit much i don't know not really well i'll take all the brightness and tackiness and colors that i can it's fine i was going to go outside and look at the things lit up but they aren't really that lit up they're really not hey hi how's everybody doing especially with the power not working over there where i was before that had a bunch of lights on it i don't know i'll figure it out toby, he's like excuse me who are you talking to you need a bath toby you're stinking I might have to take you outside and hose you off tomorrow. Toby, you want to say goodbye with me? You want to say goodbye with me? Yeah, look at the face. You got such, you got such a sweet face, Toby. Anyways, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Not in focus. Bye-bye. <laughs>